Hello, we're going to talk about some different information styles and focus on how they can be used in particular. That's a really common exam question to look at a scenario, often the pre-release and state and then explain a particular information style being used. Now, this is where you've got to be on red alert. If you hear information styles, it's one of the 12 listed on the specification. Okay, we're gonna go through lots today and a few more in the next video. So. Information styles are just different ways of conveying information, different approaches to sharing information. So text is probably our most straightforward. Uh, you use text uh, information where you want to communicate lots of detail often, and it's probably our most common way of sharing information, especially when you've got a high volume of this. Now, we often, because we speak English, focus on the kind of Western Latin character sets, but of course there are alphabets from other languages. You might speak more than one language, We've got Cyrillic on the left, probably most associated with Russian and Arabic on the right, and loads more. Now these are all different ways of representing text. And I think language is a slight drawback to using text, right? If you are wanting to write stuff down, to widen the appeal, you might need to translate it, which can be time consuming and you may not have expertise. Whereas graphics might be an alternative if you're trying to convey stuff to everyone, because graphics may not have any text, Graphics are just static pictures, which can be either real life, like photographs, or generated on a computer, like a logo might be, for example. Now, graphics might be good because they don't need any text, and so anyone can understand what they are. But of course, graphics are not always detailed. The Apple logo doesn't tell us much, apart from that it is made by Apple. And you can have animated graphics. Animated graphics might just be shortened to animations. These are moving pictures, so where you have multiple frames, being shown together. Now, these tend to be computer generated. Um, a lot of the time, if you have animations, they tend to be computer generated, but not always. So it could be stop motion animation or something like that. A GIF is an animated graphic. These are good for showing motion. Of course, a static image can't show stuff happening, whereas an animated graphic can show some movement. Now a video is very subtly different to an animated graphic. Often a video in this context will be more of a recording of real life or a mix of real life and just editing tricks. So this Samsung advert has got some computer generated parts and some real life video filming. These will often have audio, but not always. You could have a silent video, but usually there'll be audio accompanying it. But of course you could have audio separately. You could have something like a podcast which is just audio with no video a lot of the time. Audio only, again, can be quite engaging, can be more engaging than just somebody reading. But as people who watch my videos can attest, you know, things don't always, someone speaking is not always clear, you know, you make mistakes when you're talking, whereas text can be edited and can be really trimmed down and made really accurate. Somebody speaking off the cuff might not lead to a, a good amount of understanding. Now, numerical information is, I think, quite straightforward to identify, just so we have some numbers. And you might have been taught about quantitative data. This is numerical data. And often these are statistics, things like the view count of this Samsung video, but also things like dates. Even if you have some text in it, really a date would be considered numerical data. Now, numerical data is good because we can do analysis quite easily on it. Doing analysis on text data, also called qualitative data, can take a bit longer because it's not always easy to analyze long bits of text. The numbers, not really a problem. You can stick it in a database, stick it in a spreadsheet and do some easy visualization of it. Boolean data is really straightforward. Boolean data is where you have only one of two possible values. It's either one thing or something else. There's no third value if it is Boolean data. Now, most commonly, especially in computer science, this is being either true or false but also yes or no, such as on a web form, you might say uh, you have an account or you don't have an account. Even other areas like the YouTube like or dislike, that's a Boolean option. You either like it or you dislike it. These are good if you're writing, say, survey questions, because again, really easy to analyze if it is a yes or no question, because you've only got one of two options to look at. But ultimately you can't tell very much, right? Like or dislike only tells YouTube only tells other viewers so much information. It doesn't really tell much about what individual people thought about the video, for example. Now really you need to be able to learn these ones so far. There's a few other ones which I think are maybe easier to group 
and easier to categorize. I would categorize the next few as being accessibility information styles, which is all about helping those people with disabilities. So the following things I'm gonna talk about don't necessarily need to be just for people who are blind or people who are deaf, but often these information styles are used to help those people. Because ultimately, it's not really fair if you are um, not including people who have disabilities, they can't choose to be disabled, and so it's, it's useful to help them, even if it's only for being selfish and wanting to have as wide an audience as possible. So Braille is a good example of a information style to help people who are visually impaired, maybe completely blind or partially blind. So Braille, you've probably seen them in public places such as on high streets and near maps and things like this. So these are raised dots on a surface and the pattern of the dot represents a different character. So people have to learn Braille, learn what these patterns represent and so they can read text even if they can't actually see the text written down. Now a similar idea but it's a little bit different so you've got to try and distinguish this in your mind. We've got also tactile images. If something is tactile we can touch it and get a nice feeling from it. So tactile images are very similar to Braille. Braille is just for text but tactile images are more for non-text data. So for example a map is an image and if you can see you can see the map but if you can't see maybe because you're blind it might be useful to have a raised surface which represents the streets and the buildings and so on. It can help someone understand what the graphic would be showing. And the last one is not necessarily for disabilities because all of us can benefit from these but subtitles can also be used to support people who are deaf for example. You can't hear audio because a subtitle is text overlaid on videos which transcribes the audio. Transcription is the act of converting audio to text. So it writes down what the person is saying or what the song is playing or, or the sound effects, things like that. Now, some titles can also be translated and that might be useful for everyone. If you are say watching a French film, you might not speak French and so having a subtitle in English would help you understand what is being said and what is going on.